In order to join the merchant ships, container ships, cruise ships, LNG ships, whatever, you need to possess a set of minimum required documents such as PP, SB, COC, MFC, YF, SDWC. I know, too many abbreviations. We'll go deep about these documents later in the video. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Mustafa and I'm a ship's captain. In this video, we'll go step by step to cover education, certification, training and the final exam. So before, let's talk about history and know how all these requirements came at the first place. In the maritime industry, there is an organization called IAMO, short for International Maritime Organization, which is a specialized agency with the responsibility for the safety, security, and prevention of pollution by ships. So the IMO adopted a couple of conventions, regulations, codes in order for each one to focus on particular area. Safety is covered by SOLAS, short of safety of life at sea, which came after the disaster of Titanic. Marine pollution is covered by MARPOL, Marine Pollution Prevention, the major oil pollution by ships, and SCCW to cover the training certification of seafarers. SCCW stands for Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. It is one of the most important regulations for merchant mariners. It sets minimum qualification standards for masters, officers, and watch personnel on seagoing merchant ships. SCCW was adopted by IMO in 1978 and entered in force in 1984 and then a couple of amendments later on. So you need to comply with SCCW requirements in order to join the maritime sector. Before starting, there is the age condition. Your age must not be less than 18 years old. So the first one is education. As any job, you need to go through theoretical study to acquire the minimum knowledge for this industry. In the maritime industry, you need to complete a period of approved education and training and meet the standard of competence to become either a deck officer or engine officer. So nautical science focusing on navigation, ship handling and related subjects, and marine engineering for those interested in technical aspects of the ship operations. This can range from one year to five years depending on the country and your education background. Once you are admitted to a maritime institution, you will undergo a comprehensive pre-training program which includes theoretical and practical training. Once you complete the education period and before you go to the seagoing training, you need to complete a set of initial SCW certification. On board you are alone. If you face any emergency, then you need to deal with it on your own. You cannot just open the door and escape. You have to survive in the water, fight the fire, and give medical first aid to your colleagues, etc. So the first certificate you need to complete is the basic training or the basic certificate, where you acquire personal survival techniques, basic knowledge of fire prevention and firefighting, elementary first aid, and personal safety and social responsibilities. Second SCW certificate is the advanced survival techniques, where you learn how to don life jacket, board and operate survival craft, and operate the radio equipment. The third certificate is the advanced firefighting. In this training, you learn how to use the self-contained breathing apparatus, control firefighting operations on board, firefighting procedures at sea in port, and management and control of injured persons. And the fourth certificate is security-related training and instruction for seafarers. How to report security incidents, know the procedures to follow during security threat, and take part in security-related emergency. In addition to your education diploma, plus the minimum SCW certificates, of course, you will need a passport since you are traveling worldwide. And second kind of passport called the Siemens Book. In the passport, you stamp the countries, and in the Siemens Book, you stamp the ships the date of joining and the date of signing off. So far, you didn't complete all the required documentation. You need to complete the MFC, Medical Fitness Certificate. Any vessel owner or operator wants to ensure that his crew has the highest standards of medical fitness. This process is managed by doctors approved by the administration in your country. The certificate confirms that you are fit to work on seagoing ships and you do not have a medical condition, which could be a danger to other crew and or passengers. So if you are considering a career at sea, you should check the medical standards before starting your training to avoid wasted time and expense if you are found to have a medical condition which will make you unfit to work at sea. So candidates must meet specific medical and physical standards which includes good eyesight, normal color vision, normal hearing and general fitness. And the last document is the yellow fever vaccination certificate. Now all countries require proof of vaccination to prevent the spread of yellow fever. After you complete your education and all the required certification, the next step is seagoing training. It's kind of internship or cadetship. So you join your first ship as cadet for 12 months. Seagoing service is approved training of not less than one year as part of an approved training program. In these 12 months of training, you need to perform bridge watch keeping duties under the supervision of master or qualified officer for a period of not less than six months. These 12 months of seagoing training, you can do it in one go and spend one year on board or split it in two, three, four periods. In this training, you will follow a training record book, which has all the details of your training and plenty of video how to manage your training period on board 
to pass your exam easily, succeed in your career and get promotion 10 times faster. Stay tuned for it, subscribe and hit the notification button. After you complete all the trainings, theoretical, practical certification, you can now apply for the COC, which is the certificate of competency. So all these preparations, education, training, certification is together the requirement to access to this exam. This exam has two parts, a written exam for theoretical studies and an oral exam regarding your practical training. Once you pass the exam and complete other certificates related to your rank, you are ready to join your first ship. But another last step, which is the interview. So the company assess your readiness to take over the watchkeeping on your own. If you succeed, then prepare your luggage to jump into this marvelous seafarer journey. Please leave your questions regarding the subject in the comment section below. I will be happy to read and answer each one of them. Thanks for watching and see you next week.